I am Lou with another episode of My Car Story. And today we're in the suburbs of Minneapolis in Minnesota, and I'm with Randy Geyer, and he has a fantastic car today. Randy, what year make and model is this one? Well, I have a 1960 Dodge Dart Phoenix convertible. <laughs> You're gonna, well, enjoy this one, because this car, look at the front of that coming at you. Wow. Randy, what year did you find this car? I bought this in uh, 2017 from a fellow in Iowa. It was already restored. He had it completely restored by a fellow in Kansas. <clears throat> and this car is just magnificent. It's interesting because we're going to see the brochures in a second but they consider this the low end. The oh. economy line of Dodge for Dodge that year. Yeah? This was the top of the economy line. <laughs> so tell me what, uh, uh, this car has been an award winner. Um, so tell me about a little bit of that. Well, this car has competed in uh, national AACA events and has won all the way up to a AACA Senior Grand National Award, which is high wow. as awards go in the AACA. It also has won an AACA National Award. It sounds like I'm repeating myself, but I'm really not. Those are different awards. Wow. And I just want to show you what it looks like with the top up. So I wanted to show you what the car looked like with the top up. And as you can see, it looks absolutely Fantastic. And as you can see on this top, this back glass, I'll get closer. You can probably see that writing there. Super clean. And it looks like that from the back. So we're going to show you what the top looks like coming down. Jump in, guys, and we'll get that. We got some handles up there. Go ahead, jump in. We'll just show how that comes down. Is there a centerpiece or? Yeah. Yeah. Now, we'll engage these. Come back like this. And then this baby comes down. One big centerpiece yeah, there. We'll push. Okay, now you got a uh, switch over there. And this one? It says top. It's on the. You twist it. Look at that. And that top comes down. Just like that. And we're back. So as I get closer to this car, look at the nice chrome piece here. And this chrome section on the quarter panel that I'm featuring right there is just extraordinary. Now, when you're thinking of this, you know, you're thinking of maybe the 57 Chevy had that little piece in there as well. The Phoenix here. And let me meditate on those fins for just a bit because there's a lot happening. Your fin kind of comes out at the top, has a nice little curly cue going down into the tail light. You have this reflector here, this big rocket-like tail with this rocket tail reverse light, and then that. That's just fantastic. And we have the script Dodge here. Randy, do we have the keys for the trunk? Sure do. Okay, we've got our gas here. Somebody asked, they said, how's this car on gas? I said, great, it loves it. That's a great sound. <laughs> that is a great sound. So first of all, the trunk, as I step back, is absolutely massive. These are almost like many posters. Speaking of posters, I just want to let you take a look at that. So you can kind of read the background on this car. You could pause your computer there. Or your television. So here we have 
the complete line of economy cars in the low price field. This being one of them. Look at the happy faces. Make way for the all new Dodge Dart. And I'll let you take your time to pause that, to read through. Don't have to get out to stretch your legs. Some wonderful drunken treats here. Randy, I, I, you know, did the car come with all of this documentation too, or? Yes, it did. Okay, wow, that is great. That's, that was an easy purchase, right? I mean, yeah. it was all, this was a, a one and done. Sometimes you don't get that lucky, and you have to acquire this over time. But you were fortunate enough to be able to have that happen. The gentleman that owned it was big on collecting all this stuff up, so I was lucky. And he was kind of funny in that he put so much time and effort into restoring this car, he was sort of afraid to drive it a little bit. So, uh, so I think he just got to where he decided to sell it because he was sort of afraid of it a little bit. <laughs> That's interesting, right? Perfect time for you. The fun-packed, budget-priced car. Let me put your map on it. This is the story of the Dodge Dart. <clears throat> the wagon. Just great. I mean, the pictures at this time are really wonderful. The kid hanging out the back of the car. Not sure if it's a good idea to have the fire truck in the driveway. That's what it looks like. <laughs> Maybe not your best day. Sparkling performance, quiet ride. This is a really well done magazine. This was the first year for unibody construction by Chrysler. This one here car without a frame. Oh, and I didn't notice this. So there's this pull-out section showing your engine, suspension, torsion ride, the economy slant 6, which we don't have here. And then that piece flips over like that. I can feel the thickness. Now is the Phoenix series I'll call it the upgrade. Yes, the Dart series uh, had three. Uh, what do I say? Three levels. So the the low level Dart was a Seneca. There we go. I hope I get this right. You Seneca. Did. Good. Uh, and then the next level up from that was a Pioneer. And then the top of the line in the Dart series was the Phoenix. And then they had, above those was the Matador and the Polara for the full-size cars. Yeah, thank goodness this is the, uh, the baby of the bunch here. A little shorter wheelbase. Unbelievable. You can see the nice trunk matting in there. Well, let's uh, let's go to the interior, shall we? We'll close that trunk. We've got the top down, as you can see, so it's easy to see this. Look at the nice, it almost looks metallic. And the piping on this. Notice the passenger side does not have that X. The wonderful piping here. We've got this man. Thank you. You have your door has that kind of cross look to it there, and there's that metallic piece as well. Great door handle. 
very industrial like. Notice the swivel seat. So if you pull that just like so. It's spring loaded. Spring loaded, yeah. Just like that. Perfect. And we got the sun kind of hitting that a little bit. Look at how that's clear. And let me just step back and let you take that instrumentation. An air conditioned car too. Let me show you something. The sure. sun shines through the speedometer. And you can see my chubby little digits back there. See how it goes right, right through yeah. there? Oh yeah. Wow. So it comes through here. Yeah. And you see it here. Wow. Is this air conditioning here too? Yes, it is an uh, air conditioned car, yep. Wow. And also of interest is that everything works on this car. The, the air conditioning, the, all the lights, everything works just the way it should. The push button transmission. Tell me what this is here in the center. That is an orbital clock. What's an orbital clock? Well, uh, it sort of looks like a compass, but it actually is a clock, and, and the large wheel with the numbers on it will rotate, uh, and the, there's a straight red line on there that's the indicator of uh, what hour it is and minutes. And then that little red dot, that's the second hand, and it goes around, tick, 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 and it goes around and around and around inside the clock to show the seconds. And that works too? Uh, Maybe not. It did until this winter. <laughs> okay, all right. You can see the word. Dodge there. So we've got push button transmission here, and this side is the heating and air conditioning pieces? Correct, yeah. All right, push button here, there. And then right on the opposite end. I really like taking my time on this one because you can see all the details. And the Chrysler's, you can always tell that it's an air-conditioned car if it has those turrets up on the dash. I call them turrets. Got They're uh, movable vents. You can uh, turn them whatever direction you like. Absolutely wonderful. All right, let's take a look under the hood, shall we? And the mirrors are the mirrors are great. I just want to show this side mirror too. You can see myself there. You're a little bit out there, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta reach your hand out. So here's our air conditioner. As I'm moving to that, we have our plate right there. As I pan back, we'll take an overall look at the engine. Oh, that's just grand. This, this one must not have taken you too long because I know you enjoy keeping the historical legacy of these cars and keeping them what they look like back in that time frame. So it takes you right back to 1960. This one is a real gem. Look at the copper here that comes around and the work that's done so that the air conditioner can, can blow. You get your horns here. Wow, even if you look at this, you could see the lights hitting it just right. You could see the script in there. Unbelievable. Wow. Unbelievable. Look at this air conditioning unit. Because when you were back in 1960, you either had the money for a top-down or an air conditioner. Usually not both. <laughs> well, that's yeah. rather unusual to have air conditioning yeah. on a convertible. When you first saw this car, what was it? Was it just a huge smile or what? 
Yeah, I was most uh, uh, captivated by the interior, those seats and that dash just were out of this world. It looked like something out of the Jetsons to me. And I yeah. just thought, ah, oh, that's just the most breathtaking car, you know, and just all the trim, just everything about it, the shape, the fins. I was just instantly in love. So, yeah, <laughs> I, I actually asked the guy if he'd sell it and he wasn't ready at the time. So I gave him my name and number and I said, someday when you're ready to sell it, give me a call. And sure enough, he did a few years later and Isn't that great? we worked out a deal and that's how it went. Yeah. Let's, let's fire it up, shall we? Yeah, sure. Look at the, all the interior pieces here. Just grand. That's your braking system there. Maze with all the piping and hose work. That's smooth, isn't it? Brandy, while I'm back here, let's uh we'll let it idle. Can you step on the brakes for just a second? Stepping on the brakes? Yeah, yeah. No, no, just turn the uh, turn the lights on for a second. There we go. Do me a favor, throw it in reverse too, because those are such big reverse. There we go. All right, we we'll put it back, not in reverse. Let me just listen to it idle for a second. Go ahead, give it one rev. Single exhaust. Fantastic. Randy, the only thing we got left is uh, let's take it for a ride. Let's do it. So Randy and I are cruising in the 1960 Dodge Dart Phoenix convertible. How's it feel? We got the top down on a sunny day. And the temperature is right and the dew point is right. I don't know how life gets any better, Lou. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> I want to show people something only because we're doing it at the right time. Take a look at that speedometer. If you can see my hand behind it, that it does that. And that's pretty gosh darn cool how they did that. So, a couple of easy questions. Have you ever seen another one when you've been driving? No. How rare is that then? Well, it's this unusual car. Uh, I think they made about, I don't recall exactly, but I'm going to say something around 7,000 of them or something, but you just don't really see them very often. No. I mean, especially with the, the convertible on the top. And this one just floats. I want to show people what it looks like so you can see a little bit. This one just floats down the road. Sparkles in the steering wheels. Yeah, yeah let's see that. <laughs> Some in the steering wheel. Isn't that great? And we've got some wonderful Minnesota road here that we're cruising on. Yeah, that's that's good stuff right there. How did you know that you wanted to be a, a, a 50s and 60s car guy, early 60s with the fins? What what gravitated you towards the fins? Well, I, I don't know. I guess it was just the fins themselves. I just... just <laughs> They just captured my imagination of the uh, the space age, you know, the jet age, and all that kind of styling that happened then. Plus, I'm a big fan of the more chrome, the better. You know, some people say it's gaudy and nasty. I say, just keep putting it on there. I'll tell you when to stop. So. <laughs> keep brushing it on. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll just show people a little bit more of this ride. And you can feel this is on bias ply tires. You can hear that we went over a sewer cap, but you cannot feel that we went over a sewer cap. What's, and the engine on this is 318? Yeah, 318 uh, four barrel, which makes it 255 for us. 255 for us. Well, Randy, this is, we're gonna cruise a little bit more, but this is so much fun. Always a treat to see you. Great cars that are just wonderful to share with the channel. Thanks so much for being on My Car Story. Yeah, thank you, Luke. My pleasure.